Okay, so um, first of all, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, so welcome to this chat. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned to you before, uh, we have some slight changes uh, in the calendar for next week. Uh, because, uh, uh, sorry, for next week, uh, we have a few changes. Uh, one is the lab of uh, uh, it was planned for the 22 of May is moved to the Thursday, uh, the 21, the 21st of May, hmm? same hours. So it means that it will be uh, Thursday instead of Friday. Hmm. And this is because on the on the 22nd, uh, both uh, Alberto Monge and uh, Luigi Terussi will be uh, involved in a discussion for the PhD uh, title for the final exam of the PhD title for Ar Alberto Monge. So of course uh, he will be very <laughs> busy <laughs> presenting his own thesis and cannot join um, uh, our labs. So we decided to make the same change. Uh, that we also used uh, for for the for the first of May uh, of doing the the lab on the Thursday instead of the Friday. Okay, I, I'll try rem to remember that also uh, on the Slack group and uh, the calendar on the website is already updated. This means uh, that uh, the video chat uh, uh, that of, of Thursday. Uh, uh, well is tentatively cancelled sorry to, over the 21 21st is cancelled because we have uh, the lab at the same time uh, but uh, uh, we can if if you let's say on request uh, we might fix another uh, fix another date so I'm, I'm available if you if some of you even if a small group needs uh, to 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 review some some topics, uh, I'm available. Uh, the problem is that for me it's very difficult to fix a, a date uh, for me that is not uh, overlapping with any other courses, uh, and that would be inter inside the hours um, of our course. So for a moment, I would say well, I'm, I'm cancelling that. Uh, but if uh, even three or four of you, or, or even two, <laughs> uh, or one, uh, say need to to review something, uh, just let me know, and we'll try to fix a date that uh, you know is uh, is good for all the people that, uh, that that need that, okay? So these are the, the slight changes for, for the next week. Uh, then, of course, we are uh, approaching the, the end of the course. Uh, we, we don't have uh, many, uh, many big topics, uh, many new big topics to cover. Uh, actually, uh, we, we basically need to uh, to finish all uh, the the main topics about uh, about React, uh, and, and so that we can have uh, say at least one or one one week or one week and a half of say more quiet uh, development uh, where there are no big new uh, topics and we just uh, uh, you know work with exercises for preparing for the exam. And uh, talking about the exam, the exam dates should be out by tomorrow. By the 20, the 15 of May, they told me from the administration. Maybe it's not the 15; will be Monday. But in in these days, uh, I can already tell you uh, the tentative dates. Let me just look them up in my calendar because uh, if they don't change, if they don't change uh, the tentative dates uh, are on the 29th of June and uh, uh, the other date is here the 13th of July uh, but remember that may, they, they may change so I wait until the, the official publication these are the dates uh, for submitting the project okay so uh, before you have to, of course, develop the project. And after that, we will publish a calendar for the oral uh, examination. 
okay so remember that uh, what we decided and uh, the exam would be a development of the project individual development or the of individual projects development of individual project plus oral discussion of the project so we are not asking random questions you are, we will be asking questions about your own project which is basically a check that you know the project that you submitted and that uh, you uh, you know how to move in the various react components and uh, and the, the logic and of, of, um, of behavior of your system okay um in the video was what is in the video, i didn't get any letter right you all okay um so uh, of course the development of the individual project uh, uh, would be in the two weeks before so the project in the two weeks before the uh, exam date and the oral in the uh, weeks after the exam we, we try we try to depend we, I, I am not able to fix uh, how many days we will use for the orals but uh, because it depends of course on how many people submit the projects uh, the uh, we are planning uh, to publish uh, of the of the exam rules by the beginning of next week so with precise dates and information about what is expected for you and so on so we can uh, revise them and uh, uh, and if, if you find any problems uh, uh, we can uh, discuss it or something like that uh, yes, the project will be published uh, two weeks before the exam date. Mm -hmm. um, so the, this is the idea, two weeks or maybe something more. So we'll, uh, uh, in the next week when we publish uh, the detailed list, uh, we, we can also uh, fix, when the, the exam dates uh, are, will be published, we will tell you exactly in which day the project will be assigned. But it will be at least two weeks, okay? Um, and the project is the same for everybody. So everybody will be doing the same project. We have a specification that would be broad enough uh, to, so that you can develop uh, your own variants or your own customizations of the project. So it will not be photocopies of the same project. We'll have a baseline of functionalities. Then you're free to implement this functionality even in different ways uh, uh, so that uh, each of you can work on their personal project. Basically, not you're not just uh, implementing uh, uh, copies of each other. I already seen that, uh, for example, in, in the labs uh, where everybody is doing the same project, uh, you are also trying to experiment different solutions in terms of layout, uh, CSS, uh, how to implement the functionality. So um, it's, uh, it's good that everybody would explore a different way of implementing the same functionality and so it may it will create also difference between um, the, the various submitted uh, projects and it will be uh, easier for us to check that uh, you didn't copy it for, for some, from someone else um, the oral exam of the first project will happen during the first week of the second project yes of course they will overlap and uh, because there are two weeks uh, apart from the two exams and so, and so the, the period for developing the second project will overlap with the oral time unfortunately i, I don't have a time machine for for avoiding that um, the idea is that we publish uh, uh, let's say in the middle here uh, publication of the scores for the uh, projects so uh, together with the calendar of uh, of orals and uh, so you can decide if you see that the score that you get in the project is too low and you know how many points there will be for for the oral uh, i don't tell you the numbers now because we are still playing with them um, to get something which is balanced uh, so you can uh, know which is maybe the highest score that you could get uh, in the best uh, oral you can make and you can maybe decide that you want to uh, to to concentrate and focus uh, on the on the second one so you can 
Hmm? Uh, the idea is that uh, you can you oh, uh, you can refuse the score anytime before the oral. When you come to the oral, uh, we assume that uh, you will accept the score. So no refusals after the oral, normally. So that you know how many scores you have for the project will be, will be the dominant part of your score. You know how many points you have maximum for the oral. And you know that these points uh, will be yours uh, if you really did your project, uh, because we, we will make only questions on the project. So you are able to evaluate which is the maximum score that you can get uh, on the oral, which is, I wouldn't say, guaranteed by nearly guaranteed if really you work on your project so uh, we assume that we are able to, to to evaluate whether you want to take the euro and that in that case the score would be finer otherwise anytime you can you can uh, enroll for the exam and then not submit the project or submit the project and withdraw it or see the scores for the project and uh, decide not to take the euro and to go to the to the second score and so on so uh, we are you, you we are, are quite free of course there will be some some overlapping period where we still have to correct your uh, your projects so giving the scores uh, and the clock will uh, will be already started uh, for uh, the or, and, and ticking for the second uh, exam and so but we we can't avoid that in I don't see how we can avoid that uh, unless we can make the project period shorter because <laughs> but I don't like it because it will be against you and we cannot move the dates. Uh, so that's uh, in some way inevitable. Of course, you can check, uh, have a look uh, at the text for the second. And if, if you find it's easier, you can just drop the first one. But um, um, I hope you don't do that because otherwise everybody will come to the second. So maybe the suggestion to make it the second harder. No, I'm just joking. I try to make uh, them uh, of, the, of the same difficulty. Okay, so but uh, maybe after the, the the publication of the of the of the rules, uh, we can be more precise about uh, all, all these details. Uh, you see that we are not using any uh, any technical uh, uh, stuff like the respondus or the uh, uh, quiz exams and so on. We are just trying to evaluate uh, your work. Okay, so it will be an exercise more or less of the or the difficulty of the to-do list of what we are doing in, in the lab, more or less, and uh, that you can develop on your, on your own. And we just want to evaluate uh, whether you are uh, so good at developing that kind of, of, of application. Nothing fancy, no respondus or, or tricks like that, uh, that uh, are only there for increasing the anxious level of, of teachers and students. Um, Two full weeks will be needed. I hope not, really. Hmm. Uh, so I am copying just a question here. Uh, okay, we have two, Enrico. Okay, so that's uh, that's what what got got me confused. Uh, okay, um, so um, I I hope not. I hope that it will not be two full weeks. Right? You have two weeks of time in which you can allocate uh, uh, the time for development. I I would say. The difficulty or the complexity, I would say, uh, the difficulty depends on the preparation. The complexity will be uh, uh, similar to the uh, final to-do list, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we are doing uh, in lab uh, number uh, six, seven, and eight, OK? Uh, the, of course, uh, just imagine the React part. We are not uh, um, developing that in the in the plain JavaScript. Uh, so uh, I assume that uh, will take uh, some days, but not 15 days to work. So it's not a full time work for two weeks. Hmm? Okay.
Okay, so let's come to a more technical question by Angelica, who's uh, uh, discussing about uh, why should we manipulate children, okay? Um, the idea uh, of the props.children is uh, that you can create in some way Roper components. Uh, we didn't create any one uh, right now in our examples, uh, um, but uh, imagine, uh, for example, uh, uh, let's say generic Roper components. Uh, for example, um, in our case, uh, we had uh, the, uh, I'm taking the exam that you did in the, in, the, in the lectures, okay? We had the exam table hmm, that was rendering uh, exam table row. Okay, so uh, this component generates a table but this table is forced to contain always the object of type exam table row, okay? Um, if uh, uh, you want to create a, a table that may contain different types of elements inside, we cannot do that uh, normally because uh, we have uh, inside exam table, we have the render of uh, uh, exam table row. So this component is, you know, blocked and forced to uh, only render elements that contain these kind of objects. Uh, and uh, so, of course, uh, it's uh, all the stuff around for iterating, mapping, and so on. Okay, but if you want to create uh, um, maybe some sort of a, a fancy table, a fancy table component. Uh, that maybe will include different rows and this row will be colored in different ways. I don't know any, any effect that you can do, or maybe you can make the cells in the, in the, um, in the table editable, for example. So if you on click on that, you will replace the element with a text input for changing it, any kind of, uh, but you want it to be generic, not just for table, for the exam table. So you could uh, uh, maybe instantiate a component uh, uh, the first time with the list uh, uh, of uh, um, a list of um, uh, maybe exam row and once and uh, this fancy table. And the second time you may want to uh, uh, use a fancy table uh, with a list uh, of uh, to do items, for example. Hmm? So you already have one component that may be uh, exam row or to do item, which is able to render a single row. Uh, but you want to uh, wrap this component into one specific container, we'd say. So uh, the property of children is used for uh, defining this component, this fancy table component. So in this case, uh, fancy table is able to render a table and to make it uh, fancy, fancier. So maybe changing the property of the row inside and so on, uh, passing some props, uh, uh, changing the, the, the class name, for example, all the different rows uh, or whatever. So uh, the fancy table, uh, for example, in function, just a complete example. Uh, you will have uh, uh, some, oh, sorry, not render is the return. You may have uh, a table with a lot of class names. Uh, something that uh, makes the class uh, okay. And then you may, may have uh, uh, a set of uh, rows, okay. Um, so you need to wrap your uh, elements into different rows, okay? For example, you have the props.children.map and you're mapping each child onto a row with a different class. Uh, maybe you are making even odd elements or something like that. You can have uh, 
you can have maybe on click uh, on the row or on drag if you want the row to be resizable and so you customize the row and then you include the child that will contain only the, the table cells for example and uh, slash tr and and then you close the table okay we are missing the t body and t and so on so the idea is that this fancy table is able to create a table but doesn't know at the runtime until runtime it doesn't know what kind of element there will be inside this child here is a, a, a set of table cells in this case of any type so it may be two column five column whatever and uh, uh, it will be dynamically computed but the kind of uh, transformation that we do is uh, um, is defined on the external component so in this case we have a container which is not fully aware or is not fully uh, blocked uh, fixed uh, on the kind of content that it can contain <clears throat> so we have a, a dynamic way of, uh, of handling, handling them so usually it's for we are using the children for uh, generic containers so like you have maybe a, a sidebar and you want to define the layout of the sidebar the the logic for appearing disappearing or whatever at the sidebar level but you don't know yet what components will be inside the sidebar so you will just populate the sidebar with the children and these children will uh, will be different type of, of components that you don't know yet okay or maybe you know because they are always table cells but we know you know what type how many columns how many details so this uh, uh, is the only way that we have to define you see that a custom component like fancy table is outside another component so it's dropping that uh, in the examples that if you see uh, um, we always had the our component as the leaves of the tree of component when you're rendering something you have your we are on components but they are always terminal in our examples because we didn't have to, to manipulate children and so the containers are always divs spans tables uh, uh, uls and uh, forms and so on they are wrapping the component its component is inside so but we didn't we uh, in our exercise we never used the uh, uh, continued inside the component and uh, the, the children is the way for for doing that thank you angelica um okay uh pierluigi is asking whether is it okay in react to let bootstrap handle the appearance and disappearance of a form instead of wrapping it into a container uh, with the classic fade and face oh okay so uh, bootstrap uh, and react have a um, sort of um, different uh, philosophy okay uh, bootstrap is uh, imperative because you call methods for making elements appear or disappear or you add and, and remove classes uh, while in react you tend to re-render it uh, if we want to have the so the best choice the best uh, uh, the best option i would say, i would think uh, is to use uh, the package which called the react bootstrap or bootstrap react just let me check because we had just a discussion yesterday uh, react bootstrap ba, 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 ba. yes it's called react bootstrap it's a it's a package you can look it up You can install it in the in um, in your uh, in your project. So npm install React Bootstrap, and uh, uh, what this package does is to rebuild all the Bootstrap components uh, in React. So it's using uh, the CSS uh, uh, the CSS from bootstrap but rebuilds all components 
in React. So in this way, you can still think uh, about the layout uh, using the bootstrap that we are become familiar with, uh, but you can really use components. Uh, just to, to give you an example, uh, you see here, there's the menu of uh, React Bootstrap. Uh, if you go into components and you check, uh, I don't know, for example, the model, hmm, it was, uh, and will be one of the, the problems in, the, in, the, in tomorrow's lab. Uh, you see that uh, we have a component uh, model dialog uh, that will include a model header, model title, model body, model footer. And these are all components that are built for you and they behave like, uh, uh, like the booster model uh, component. And, uh, and so uh, instead of fighting with, uh, with classes, uh, you can uh, uh, and try to achieve what you want by dynamically changing the, the classes. Uh, it, is pos it, it is possible in React, but of course you must go through a state. Uh, you must uh, make the bootstrap component that's uh, uh, controlled by React. So uh, React will have to, to change the props so that the component can change the classes and so on. And so all this work was already done by, by these people. Uh, for example, an alert uh, like this. Uh, we, we used it to create a div with a, with a, uh, with a real class. Uh, but actually, uh, there is an alert tag that uh, uh, gets a, a variant property that will uh, uh, change the, the appearance of that. So this is a project which is not a big project. It's quite new also, but we found that it was uh, uh, quite useful in order to, uh, to avoid fighting too much. So the, the second option, of course, uh, is to let Bootstrap uh, work in an uncontrolled way. Uh, so some component will be uncontrolled, so they will be using the, the, the JavaScript inside Bootstrap. It can create problems sometimes with synchronization because React then will not understand what is happening. Uh, uh, it can create conflicts because uh, React and JavaScript are not good friends. Uh, and so, for example, for the model, it will be difficult to synchronize the two. Uh, but it can be done if you want to pull in this, uh, this uh, other package, this React Bootstrap package. Mm. Uh, it depends case by case. Mm. But uh, uh, the third option, sorry. Uh, is recreate the behavior in React. Uh, so if you, uh, instead of using the fade class of, of Bootstrap, uh, you use the an, an animation in React. We didn't uh, uh, explain them during the lectures, but they're quite easy. There are, there's a possibility of, of defining a, in animation, so uh, changing the, the transparency level, for example, of an object uh, with a given range uh, automatically. Also in React, you can do that. So we are recreating. Uh, your, you, we know what, ex well, what effect we want to achieve. Uh, and uh, for example, in my exercise, I didn't use the model for using the form. I was using just the hidden uh, and the um, invisible uh, attributes uh, to make it appear and disappear. Of course, it's, uh, it's more work. Okay, because you have to handle that uh, by hand, but it's always a possibility. It depends on the extent of what you are trying to do. Um, so I guess uh, uh, that I don't know whether Ricardo still has a question or he just. Uh, uh, figured it uh, uh, by itself. Um, okay, thank you. So we move to the next question, which is uh, from one of the two, Enrico. I don't understand Power React is React. We have to know perfectly HTML, JS, and Bootstrap framework. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, moreover, before using React, you have to think to design component syntax and so on. Um, well, um, there are, I have two, two answers for this. Uh, one is uh, there are two ways uh, of learning React. One is the Kubook uh, method. So that somebody would tell you, 
how to work, how to create components. So you just follow the rules uh, and, uh, uh, and they are able to, to do something, okay? Uh, just by, you know, there are people who sort of learn React without learning JavaScript. And it's possible if you don't need to, do, to go deep into the full stack and understand uh, whatever you are doing. And so you are just taking the syntax for granted. Okay, yeah, you write this, that will happen. Uh, we did follow this route, of course. So we started from the ground up so that whenever we write something in React, our brain is you know, fishing deep into our knowledge of JavaScript and we really understand what is happening. And I think this is the only way that uh, you know, in a, a, an engineer uh, should, uh, should work in, in this domain. Also because, uh, um, this will give us uh, the, the capability of switching to another framework uh, if we need that. Okay, React is here, but uh, two years ago, the most popular one was uh, Angular, and uh, there is the Vue uh, framework, which is also gaining uh, uh, attraction and popularity. So who knows which is the framework that we are going to use in three years. So if we only learn the framework, uh, uh, we will have a difficulty of, of switching because we don't have the basic concepts. Right now, you see, um, I think that the time and the effort that we needed to learn uh, React uh, was very low, actually, but not, not very low, but quite, quite easy because we could uh, uh, explain what is happening by using the concept that we already worked uh, several weeks for. This, the, uh, so we, we chose the hard way hmm? and not the easy way, just because we want something to, to remain in your, you know, you know, yes, in your professionality, in your skills. The second answer that he has to this is, uh, uh, yes, we have a more effort of design, hmm? but a much smaller effort uh, in implementation. Uh, remember that in React, you don't have to struggle with many uh, event handlers that call themselves. I remember the discussion that we had uh, uh, during the labs uh, uh, when we are implementing JavaScript on the to-do list. So there's some data that is stored in the one component and you, you need to, to parse the DOM and get the attributes and use those attributes to create something else. Uh, and we just hope that this will happen before uh, the other. So do I render the list of tasks before and then parse the list to, to get the projects uh, or do I analyze the projects first? Uh, uh, but if I run the list, I cannot, uh, before the project, I cannot have a, a project tag uh, besides each, each of them because the, the list of projects was not created yet. So you are, you are forgetting <laughs> all these problems. So that's why uh, we were uh, asking you to start developing in, in basic JavaScript uh, because you see that there's a lot, a, lot, a really lot of low level issues going on and all the synchronization, all the data which is scattered through all uh, JavaScript variables everywhere, uh, a DOM component, the values of the components everywhere. Um, and you need to remember that if I click on this, I need to disable that component and so on. Okay, all of this complexity, so the low level of synchronization and that exchange between the component is wiped out, it doesn't exist anymore. You have to design by the design with a more clean, a cleaner version of state. You know, you know the state, you know how to manipulate the state, nothing else can change that. And so it's much easier to have a, a clean design and something that doesn't have an unpredictable result. So it may seem hard at the beginning because you have to think at a higher level, uh, but on the end, I'm, I'm, I'm quite convinced that it, will, it, it pays up. It pays up because you 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 don't have to think about all the very little event handlers here and there, um, and what are their side effects? Because you know, normal JavaScript programming is a side effect programming. Everything you do some in some place will change some property or some other component in basic JavaScript. Here, there are no side effects anywhere. Anywhere, of course, it's a it's a long jump, so we need to. To learn how to think in this way is not easy if we are uh, accustomed to, to many procedural languages uh, to, to have this kind of uh, design thinking. But in the end, I find it as, uh, of course, you lose some time passing the properties and so on, but compared with the time of debugging asynchronous event handlers, uh, well, I will buy it uh, 10 times more. 
but you, you might like or not, of course, but uh, the idea is that there are many, many frameworks of the, out there and all of them give you a way of thinking, okay? Um, the important thing for me as a teacher is that uh, you see this way of thinking, but you also have the ground knowledge uh, for learning other ways of thinking that other frameworks would, would suggest you to do. And so uh, that's important. If we only had to learn the React, uh, then you would be stuck with that. Uh, and when seeing other other frameworks, we would have, you would have a hard time to adapt into them. Um, okay, then we have. Uh, uh, the message of. Uh, saying uh, that, oh, well, uh, I'm interpreting the text of uh, lab uh, eight. Um, yes, oh, okay, if you, oh, let's, let's be clear, bootstrap classes and React are perfectly fine. Perfectly fine because, uh, after all, it's uh, all, all CSS. So the CSS are not uh, actually visible or uh, managed in any way by React. React doesn't care about the CSS, uh, the basic version of React that we learned. Then there are some people that are advocating the usage of CSS in JavaScript. So like uh, JavaScript is generated the HTML, some people want to generate the CSS directly from the JavaScript. But that's, it's a different topic. Um, so if you are using the booster classes, uh, um, well, and the JavaScript is basically uh, used for uh, for making the animation or the application of the classes happen, all, all is fine, mm, nothing problem. The problem is that some components uh, components uh, need jQuery uh, to be activated, for example. Huh? So you see all the dollar syntax uh, also in the example in the documentation. And this re uh, requires, of course, jQuery uh, works at the DOM level and doesn't know uh, about uh, components hmm? and especially state. So it means that your uh, component uh, will be, from the point of view uh, of React, uh, partially uncontrolled. So you have to extract the nodes with references. Uh, and you have to uh, deal with, with uncontrolled behavior. And also, uh, it's you have a difficulty of calling the methods and the objects uh, at the right time because uh, you know you you need to tell a component to display itself or to start the animation to stop the animation to cancel and whatever you not, you must call a method uh, when do you call that method you are calling that method maybe inside uh, an event tender of React, uh, but or inside the render method, or inside uh, in a life cycle, uh, life, one of the life cycle methods uh, that you may have. Uh, and, but you are not, uh, we don't have the full control over the life cycle methods. So in some cases, it will be difficult to find a way of calling the object method down at the, at the DOM level, the jQuery level, um, by calling it in the right place uh, in the life cycle of the component. Maybe you know that components uh, can re-render themselves many times. And so uh, if you're putting something into the render method, uh, maybe you are calling too many times uh, what uh, the, the low level methods and so on. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but you need uh, basically to look, up, uh, look out uh, for side effects. Because uh, calling a method at the long level is not uh, idempotent, so change the method many times. So if you call it one times more or one times less, the result could be different, and you are you you don't 
we don't really have the control over how many times we are calling the method because they will be inside the, uh, the life cycles. So it's not impossible, of course, but uh, if the problem is not, uh, uh, you see, Bootstrap, but it's more jQuery, which uh, is working at the lower level, and, uh, um, and jQuery was used a lot uh, in the in the old JavaScript times, uh, where JavaScript not, was not uh, so powerful, so, so object object oriented as the JavaScript 2015 that we learned uh, in the in the first part of the course. Uh, but it's still uh, working in this way, okay? Uh, which is uh, bottom up from the event of the component. Uh, we must be careful of what we do because if we mix them uh, in many places, then unpredictable results may happen. But uh, it's not forbidden. It just takes more care, more attention, and more understanding. More understanding of what uh, what happens at the low level in the React part and in the jQuery part. Unfortunately, Bootstrap doesn't work without jQuery, and that is why these guys of the React Bootstrap re-implemented everything. So if you read the documentation, by getting rid of jQuery. So all of this doesn't use the jQuery library anymore. So they could re-implement everything using the normal JavaScript and the React workflow because they found problems. Uh, I, I wouldn't go so far hmm, as telling uh, which is best to refactor, okay? Careful. Uh, telling which is best or, or not depends on, on, on many factors, okay? It's one possibility. Uh, in, the, in the lab, uh, we gave you, we suggested two options. One, doing that yourself in, in pure CSS and the other using the package, okay? Uh, saying it's the best, uh, my answer is always uh, it depends. Okay, there is no right way for anything. Okay. While I'm waiting for the next question, just putting this uh, this page again. So that if anybody just joined, uh, just to to remind you that we changed some some dates uh, on the next week. By the way, if you are you if you want, you are invited to the PhD thesis of Alberto, if you want, we'll publish the link. <laughs> but don't tell Alberto, he's a, a shy guy.
Any other issues? We have a question about the performance. Yes. Um, why the React app needs too much time to start in the first time you open the project? Because it's not just loading your React project. Uh, because it's loading, of course, the first time all the JavaScript uh, in your, pro your project, which is not much, plus the React library which is not so large, plus all the development libraries uh, that you need uh, for the development mode, okay? So all the features that we have uh, of uh, um, translating on the fly, the JSX using the Babel library, all the features for um, live reload, no? You see that uh, when you're saving something in the editor, the uh, interface will load automatically. So they will set up a communication between the server and the JavaScript. So there's a lot of hidden job, hidden, not, it's not hidden, but uh, it's not yours, it's not uh, necessary, it's just there for development mode. Hmm? So like the hot reloads and so on. Uh, and so all these need to be set up the first time. And also on the server side, uh, and also the browser, needs uh, uh, to wait uh, for the server to compile all JavaScript, uh, launch the web server, and uh, pack and uh, pack and uh, the, um, transmit uh, the JS code. Because the server, when it starts, will take all your JavaScript and put everything together. So we are processing the modules in a way. Okay, all the all the imports are processed and they're put together into one single file, which is then given. So it takes time to compile this file because you need to translate it, pack it together, resolve the references, so linking, I would say, and then transfer to the browser. Then the browser will need to reparse it, of course, um, in order to show it. Most of this uh, will not happen in uh, in um, in uh, real mode, no? in the in uh, production mode. Hmm? So most of this uh, will not happen in production mode. In uh, sorry, just production mode. If you if you compile it with npm build, you see that it will do all of this packing analysis translation at build time, and it will give you a very small package, a very small JavaScript file that will contain everything. Uh, the JavaScript, your JavaScript reactor and the dependencies in one single uh, packed file. And if you try to open this, uh, this build uh, uh, by, by putting it on, onto a web server somewhere, uh, which is not, not the React development server that we are using, uh, um in uh, right now um you will see that it's much faster so most of the overhead is for setting up all the development mode and the on the fly translations and so on uh in the in the next week uh, we'll have some some more uh say half a lecture about uh, how, what what is happening under the hood when you are actually using because we need to uh, to understand better how to make the React web server interact with an API server. So we'll get into a bit more detail about this, how, how it works. 
but uh, we can be happy that uh, on in, in build mode, so when you are actually executing the build, it's not so slow as the development uh, version. This is yes, it's not, but it's not in your case. It's for everybody. When you click the first time, you you are always wondering, did it do something wrong because it's not starting? Then it goes, but. Uh, um, I never saw this error that uh, uh, Pierluigi is is mentioning. Uh, the max number of watches has been, has been reached. Uh, I never saw this this message. Um, what is the environment in which you're running? Windows, uh, Linux, uh, virtual machine, Mac. Uh, Ubuntu in a virtual machine. So I shouldn't, uh, the max number of watts. So this could be um, because of course, uh, uh, the React development server is uh, watching all the files uh, because it needs to be notified whenever you change a file. So of course uh, you can change your own files, uh, but it looks, it seems that uh, it's also trying to watch uh, all the modifications in node modules. And so you have thousands of files there uh, because it needs to trigger a refresh of the front end application whenever a local file on the server changes. It seems that from, from the information that you give me, uh, it seems that uh, uh, it's uh, trying to also to watch for modifications inside node modules and should not do that uh, really. Uh, he, did you create uh, with create react, react app? So, uh, one one issue could be that if you use the create react react app it will store some file paths for configure for, for configuring configuring the different features uh, if uh, um, if uh, you uh, move the project or rename the project directory. This happened to me a couple of times. Some paths may, may not work anymore. So maybe there's an exclude path somewhere that will exclude the, uh, uh, the watching of the files inside node modules, uh, uh, which is uh, points to, to the old location. Yes, I see that uh, you name the project directory one. So it happens also to me. Uh, when you move something, then it, it uh, loses some references, uh, and uh, uh, and so it it doesn't understand. Uh, so the runtime component doesn't understand which is your code and which is the uh, dependency modules. So it's trying to go and watch them. Uh, we need to find where this uh, uh, directory location is stored and change it. So maybe. We could spend some time uh, offline and maybe chatting for 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 finding the solution uh, to this. Um, it's uh, in one of the many configuration JSON configuration files somewhere. It's it's quite sensitive react uh, to the names, uh, especially the, of course, all the development environment uh, uh, or to, to the location. Uh, yeah, and once I try to re rename a project uh, in uh, in WebStorm and everything broke up, it didn't <laughs> work anymore. I had to recreate it from scratch. Uh, so renaming is not, uh, unfortunately, is not uh, uh, a seamless operation. Uh, you say that you have, if you are doing that as a super user, it doesn't happen. Well, don't, don't. Okay. Uh, web applications as a super user are not suggested in, in any case uh, because you don't have uh, all the protections uh, or as running uh, as a normal user. Uh, remember that uh, in uh, the real web servers. Uh, run with the privileges, with the lowest possible privileges. Huh? A real web service, you go to a server, it will run with the user nobody, not with the user root. 
because you don't want to give any web server more uh, permission that you they, then uh, then it really needs. So this is not a solution. Huh? Is seeking for more problems. <laughs> I, I was looking for your problem too. Uh, again, uh, well, regarding file watchers, uh, all the documentation told me to increase the number of watchers that are supported by the file system. Uh, it might be that uh, they, they, there are some of them that are left uh, over open, uh, but uh, and but didn't find a way of excluding not modules. Uh, uh, If restarting helps, it means that some maybe you are uh, 
running many copies uh, or some watches are not being uh, released after the the end of, uh, of the um, or after the end of the application, so the application maybe is not soft, stopped uh, correctly, and uh, when you run it many times, uh, they will accumulate. Uh, but it should not happen really. Uh, it just restarting nodes should be enough because the uh, the watches are associated with the process. Okay. Let's see if we find something more useful in the next days. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Any other topics you'd like to share? Okay, so I would say that I would suggest that we don't, if we don't have any new topics, uh, we could uh, also close the sessions. We are yeah, nearly 15 minutes uh, before the end, so you and you also, we, we, we would still have time for a coffee before uh, the next classes that you may have uh, at 11:30. Okay. Okay, good. So just remember, uh, maybe I will set up a poll for the next week uh, where the video chat will be canceled. Uh, I will put up out a, a poll on uh, on um, on Slack so that if uh, anyone wants to schedule that uh, in in, a, in another time, in the, which is not be we will not be in, in on Thursday morning or on Friday morning because uh, we, we cannot do that uh, if we, on on that week. Uh, uh, so uh, we can organize it in a, in a different uh, hour uh, for anybody that is interested. Interested, no? because at that at that time, at this time in the course, we start uh, actually you know, uh, facing more uh, implementation and technical issues rather than the theory. So maybe there's more uh, also interesting discussions to go on. And uh, but for the rest, uh, let's just. Uh, uh, Take note that uh, the lab will be on Thursday, and that uh, at the beginning of the, of the week uh, we'll publish the, the dates of the exams and the rules for the exams, so that we have time to to prepare uh, with uh, six weeks in advance, uh, low, knowing the rules. Uh, so well, you you won't get uh, last minute information about uh, how the exam works. I will try to do that uh, well in advance. Okay, so. Thank you for coming today, and uh, I hope you enjoy the lab tomorrow, and uh, we'll see in some way next week. Okay, bye bye to everybody.